Welcome to Beat Diabetes. On today's program, we'll be looking at the A1C score. What is it? What does it mean? And how is it calculated? Coming up. This person says, I went to the emergency room and I was told that I had diabetes. I guess that's one of the scariest things, that and cancer, to hear from the mouth of a doctor. My A1C was 11.9. 11.9 is high, very high. When I got home, I began to research how to lower my blood sugar so I could beat this disease. Good for you. Uh, he didn't just take some meds and hope for the best. He began to read, began to watch videos, began to think. And he says, I found your YouTube channel. I began to lower my carbs and my diet. And today, three months later, just three short months later, he says, I went into my doctor's office to check my A1C, and it is now 4.9. 11.9? Three months later, 4.9. He dropped seven full points in his A1C in three months. And folks, we just hear this all the time. I'm not making this up. You know, read the comments. You'll just see it from all kinds of people that are telling these stories. He says, with my 4.9 A1C, my doctor told me he has never he has never had a patient lower their A1C that much. Well, it is unusual. Most doctors, they nag, they beg, they plead, they rebuke, they tell you, you got to get that A1C down. But they often, not always, but often they don't really have a plan to do it except take your meds, lose some weight, take your meds, lose some weight, take your meds, lose some weight. Uh, but they don't think about some of these other things, particularly diet. So the doctor says, I've never had a patient lower his A1C like you did. So he says, I told my doctor all I did was follow your recommendations and a low-carb diet. Thank you, Dennis. <laughs> we see that so much in the comments. Uh, often doctors will say, I've never seen that high of an A1C when they start out. And then when they get it low, the doctors will say, well, I've never seen an A1C drop like yours did in three months or six months or whatever it was. You know, the, the neat thing about beating diabetes is it doesn't take a lot of skill. There are some things in life that take natural-born talent. When I was a young person, I wanted to be a professional baseball player. And I practiced with my buddy, my buddy Tom. Uh, during the summers, and we would field grounders, and we would go to the park and hit baseball. Nowadays, young people don't do stuff like that. They're home watching video games. But, you know, we in my day, there was no YouTube. There were no video games. And uh, so we were out a lot. But we both wanted to be professional baseball players, and we practiced a lot. <laughs> but the time came when I realized it wouldn't matter if I practiced 12 hours a day. I just didn't have what it took to be a professional baseball player. I wanted to be a top-notch golfer. And I realized after a while that it wouldn't matter if I went to the driving range 10, 12 hours a day. I would never get up there in the ranks of the professionals. I just didn't have it. When I became an adult and got into the ministry, I wanted to be the next Billy Graham. I wanted to fill up stadiums preaching the gospel. And uh, I worked and I read the Bible and prayed and fasted and, and did all that I thought I could do, worked on my sermons to try to be the best speaker and communicator I could be. And that, <laughs> that didn't work either. I mean, God has used me in evangelism and in teaching the Bible. Uh, you know, it's not that I don't have gifts in those areas, but I'm no Billy Graham. Uh, and never could be. It wouldn't matter how many books I read on, you know, how to be a great speaker. I just wouldn't have it. So there are th some things that require not only dedication, not only ambition, but just flat talent. And if you don't have it, it hardly matters. But the good news is when it comes to beating diabetes, you don't have to be talented. You don't have to be all that smart. 
You just need some basic information and a little motivation, and you can make it. You can see that victory. And oh, it feels so good when you do. So this guy has seen it, um, and he has gone seven points down. When I see someone that makes it into the fours, I say, now that's someone that took this serious, even probably more seriously than I do. You know, they really got serious with their diet. And uh, boy, he sure saw the results. Man, you know, we talk about how terrible it feels to come home from the doctor when he has just told you you have diabetes. Imagine how this guy felt when he came back from the doctor after finding out his A1C was 4.9. Now, I'm sure he was probably expecting a pretty good A1C, but probably not that low. 4.9. 4.9. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Well done, my friend. And uh, that, that I'm thrilled for you. Here's an individual who says, I have one question. Do you know how the A1C number is determined? I know that it's an average over a three-month period, but what does that equation look like? Well, it's not really an equation. It is a percentage of glycated hemoglobin cells or pieces or parts or whatever. Let me read to get this uh, just accurately from the AccuCheck. If you're going to be accurate, go to AccuCheck. AccuCheck, AccuCheck website says this, your A1C test measures your average blood sugar levels by taking a sample of hemoglobin cells, a component of your red blood cells. So, you know, we've all got red blood cells, right? And within those red blood cells, there are hemoglobin cells. And it says, here's how it works. Some blood sugar or glucose naturally attaches to the A1C cells as they move through your blood, your bloodstream. So we all have some blood sugar. We'd be in bad shape if we didn't. You know, if you had a glucose level of zero, you'd probably be dead. And uh, so we all have some. And as this glucose circulates through our blood, It finds these hemoglobin cells, and some of them it attaches itself to. They call that glycation or glycated cells. Basically, what they are are sugar-coated. Some of that sugar attaches to the cells and coats them. But it never does that to all the cells. So reading from this uh, AccuCheck uh, website, once a cell has uh, been glycated or sugar-coated, It stays that way. And since each A1C cell has a lifespan of about four months, your A1C sample will include cells that are a few days old, a few weeks, a few months. As a result, the test covers a span of about two to three months. Most people will say it's closer to three. The more sugar in your blood, the higher percentage of glycated A1C cells you have, the more sugar-coated hemoglobin cells are going to be there. And that percentage is your A1C test result. So what they do is they take a sample of your blood, they check out the hemoglobin cells, and they are determining what percentage of these hemoglobin cells are glycated. They're sugar-coated. Sugar has attached itself to them. It's never 100%. (laughs) If it was, you'd, you'd have an A1C of 100. But we never say... I had an A1C of 100. You might have a 7, an 8, a 10. That's percent. That's the percent of your cells that were sugar-coated as a result of your blood sugar uh, floating through your uh, blood, the, the sugar floating through the blood for the last three months. It's kind of an average. So if your average is in the fours, it's like perfect. It's perfection. That's what you expect from like a 12-year-old little boy or little girl. Uh, If it's in the fives, it's pretty good. It's quite good, especially for an older person. When it gets in the six, it's becoming worrisome. If it gets over 6.5, now this is percent. So that test is checking what percent of those hemoglobin cells, that's why they call it the hemoglobin A1C. I never say the whole thing. I just say A1C, but it's officially the hemoglobin A1C or HA1C. What percent of those hemoglobin cells is sugar-coated or glycated. And whatever the percent is, that's what your A1C number is. If you've got an A1C of 6, you've got 6% of those cells sugar-coated or glycated. If you've got an 8, it's 8%. It doesn't take much. 
And if you've got 10% of your hemoglobin cells that are sugar-coated, glycated, you're in bad shape. You know, you're a serious diabetic. So that's your A1C. That's what the test is going to figure out. And there are even home tests, which are pretty accurate, I think. Uh, they have been in my case uh, that can tell you that in uh, five minutes' time. So, you know, you, you know, if you live in a place where you can get these home A1C tests, then that's something to consider. But if you go to the doctor every three months, you get to A1C is a standard thing. And most diabetics should be doing that. And you'll find out. So that's your A1C, and it's uh, the the Americans used to use the fasting glucose, but nowadays, if they're going to determine you're diabetic, they'll look more at the A1C, and if it's 6.5 or higher, you're diabetic. Uh, usually, a lot of the diabetic doctors and uh, endocrinologists are happy if their patient can stay at least in the sevens. Dr. Bernstein doesn't feel that way. He feels like there's no reason you can't be in the fours. No, <laughs> he goes a little farther than I do. I'm kind of happy to have my glucose, you know, my A1C in the low fives. But um, yeah, that's what it's looking at. It's looking at uh, how much sugar has attached itself. And that's going to be determined by how much sugar is floating around in your blood. If you got a lot of sugar, you're going to have a lot more sugar-coated cells than if you have only a few. Okay, well, that is it for now. Hope you enjoyed this. If so, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing so that YouTube will notify you when we post new videos. God bless. See you again soon.